The pastor that Drew Peterson was referring to is now here with me live. Neil Shorey was Stacey Peterson's minister. He was also the prosecution's star witness at the trial that convicted Drew Peterson. Um, Neil Shorey, thank you so much for, for being on with me tonight. I'd, I'd love to get your reaction to that claim that you just heard Drew make, that he thinks you had a thing for his now missing uh, wife, Stacey. Thank you so much for having me on, Ashley. Um, this is really a, a recycled, extremely tired talking point that Drew brought up first in 2007. Um, he was on a show with uh, Joel Brodsky, his attorney at the time, and he made this claim. And uh, I believe he was on Dan Abrams' show, and Dan actually challenged him and said, um, well, if you have uh, whoever your source is, you need to reveal that. Otherwise, we're not going to allow you to say things like that. And the next day, um, or two days later, they had to recant and said, oh, that's not true. Um, we, had a, um, we had a detective follow Pastor Shorey, and we actually know that he has a good, good marriage, a good relationship. And, and I remember Dan Abrams said to Joel, well, who is your source? And he said, well, actually, it was Drew. <laughs> so that's, it just, it all fell apart really quickly. So honestly, it's just kind of the tired old story that, that Drew's recycling. Um, and he clearly wants attention, unlike what he said last night to you. Yeah, so react to that. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, anybody who's watching right now who didn't catch it, um, I asked him, look, you're, you're in there for life. You're never getting out. Even if you have this trial overturned, you got another one that's 40 years long. It's consecutive. You're never getting out of prison. Why not just come clean? Why not just admit it? Why not just lay it all out there? And the innocent person, you would think, would say, because I didn't do it. Um, but that's not what he said. Instead, he said, because I don't want my kids believing that. I don't want my kids knowing that. So what's your reaction to that? Um, I'm not surprised at all by it. Um, Drew seems to be 17 years later, almost 17 years later, the same guy that I saw the last time that I saw him in person. He's older, um, clearly in worse shape, as you guys so aptly pointed out. It's all true, but he, at the core, he seems like the same guy, which is really, really disappointing to not see anybody change, even after spending so much time, so much time in jail and prison. Speaking of that, um, you know, I, uh, I mentioned that part to him, that very important part, which you testified to, which was when you were counseling Stacy. in so many words, I probably overstated it by, you know, um, paraphrasing and saying, if I, if I, if I disappear, it's Drew. Can you tell me what, what it was, um, that Stacy inferred to you, what Stacy said to you, how she characterized her fear of being with Drew and what he had said to her about his third wife's death. Sure, sure. Well, the, the last time that I met with Stacy, she basically told me exactly what happened the night that Kathleen died. And it was, she, she gave me details down to when Drew left the house and, and she looked for him and didn't know where he was. She tried to reach him by cell phone. Two hours later, he came back through uh, into the laundry room and he was wearing all black head to toe. Um, uh, and, and he had a duffel bag with women's clothes in it. And, and Stacy looked in there and realized those weren't hers. So uh, a little bit later, he came to her and he said, uh, really soon the police are going to be here. And if you tell them what I tell you to say, this will be the perfect crime. So a little bit later, the police showed up just like Drew said, and um, they allowed Drew to sit with Stacy while she was being interviewed by the police and giving him the alibi that he told her to give. So, so just an absolutely preposterous situation. Um, so uh, when Stacy told me this, I asked her, what do you want me to do with this information? Um, and the reality was at the time, I didn't have any training in domestic violence. I have a master's degree in counseling, I'm a pastor, uh, but I had no training in domestic violence, which is really sad and really wrong. Pastors get trained in domestic violence. Um, but at the time I didn't know, so I asked her, what do, you, what do you want me to do? And she said, she looked at me, I'll never forget how she looked at me. She said, I just want you to know. And I, I said, I said, Stacy, um, have you told anybody else this information? And she said, no one. And I just, there was just this weighty moment where I realized she's entrusting this really, really dark moment um, that she's now held in for over three years uh, with, to me. And, and I realized, my gosh, this is dark. This is desperate. And I definitely knew what she was suggesting. In my view, um, she knew that he, he was going to kill her just like he had killed Kathleen. 
Um, and I have no doubt in my mind that that's exactly what he did. So I put that to him, and his response was, well, if that's true, if, uh, if she said that to Pastor Shorey, then why'd she stay? She stayed with me. Why do you think she'd stay? Do you have an answer? Well, I, I mean, at the time, I probably wouldn't have had a great answer, but now after working with hundreds of domestic violence victims, I can tell you that people want to question why victims don't leave. And the reality is the question should be why are abusers abusing? So um, there's so many reasons that victims don't leave. Um, they don't have finances. They've been belittled for years. Um, they've been told that nobody else would want them. I'm guessing that Stacy went through a whole lot of those things that I've seen um, in victims over the last 15 years. So that's what I would guess is that he wore her down and he groomed her. She was 17 and he was 47 when they got together. Inappropriate, no matter what the state of Illinois says. Age of consent is technically 17. We all know now, um, post uh, the Me Too movement and and all these all, all these exposés that are out there about abuse of power and authority. And, and we can confidently say that it is wrong when someone is in a position of authority and they use that authority to control another person. And I know that's exactly what Drew Peterson did with Stacey and all of his other wives. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.